Loveline may contain sexually oriented content. Content. Listener discretion is advised. Adam Carolla and Dr. Drew. Loveline. Coast to coast. Hey, and it is Loveline. I'm Dr. Drew. That is Adam Carolla. Yeah. Hey, Drew, can you hear me? Loud and clear. And the guest tonight, not just the love that exists constantly between us, but the great Jimmy Kimmel. Yes. Thank you. Thank you. Oh, my God. There he is. Here I is. Were oh, you hearing that echo, Jimmy? I do. Yeah, that's the, uh, the ISDN connection, right? We get no echo down here, so just talk. Oh, right, we'll be all right. <laughs> do what you're paid to do. Horrible. Oh, shut up, Drew. Don't start in with me. Uh, listen, How I'm dare in, you. I, I'm in control tonight. Don't don't mouth off at me. Yeah, really, Adam. Keep keep your. You know, yeah, you know I might turn you funny? off. You have to go home and go to bed. Wouldn't that be awful? <laughs> yeah, please punish me. I I was standing next to Jimmy in the uh, control room about uh, forty seconds ago, staring at him and thinking, Jesus Christ, I hope we don't have a guest tonight. <laughs> <laughs> I swear to God, that's what I was thinking. <laughs> yeah. Well, here I am. Yeah. You know. Uh, you know how my uh, I, I described this to Drew the last time I was on the show. My penis isn't isn't really in such good shape. Yeah. I peed all over myself about thirty four minutes ago. What the wiper? All over my pants. The uh, the wiper the the wiper spray action. Yeah, because I had to have the hole in my penis enlarged. Yes. And um, they did do it once, and then they did it ag- again. And As I recall, I was the one that kind of set you down that path, wasn't I? You did. You yeah. did. Thank you. And and uh, they did it the third time, and the third time it, it's large enough now, but it, there's no accuracy whatsoever. It's um, like a rainbird sprinkler, <laughs> and it's totally unpredictable. I mean, it can sometimes it's perfectly it's straight as an arrow, and sometimes it'll actually go backwards through the urethra and squirt out my ass. Do you get that and cool split stream what thing? Happened. Where one, one really, stream goes forward and the other stream goes left? Sometimes I get that. It's sometimes nice. it just all goes in a crazy direction. It's it's ridiculous. But it really is the um, it's the cherry on your comedy topping. I mean your your comedy Sunday. You have a seltzer bottle for a penis now. <laughs> You're right. I'm like a sad clown. <laughs> <laughs> Wizzo. <laughs> Line up, kids. But I, yeah, I remember sure. you describing the the joy with which you approached that procedure when they as they poke those metal tubes spikes down your penis. Well, that's the thing. Every time I pee all over myself, um, somebody tells me, you better go back to the doctor and you better get that taken care of. And I, I always say this, I'm never going to the doctor again. Never. Because the only way to fix this is with that goddamn knife again. And that's, that metal blade is never touching my penis again. It's, well, never. Let's describe it. It's more than a knife. It's, it's a, a railroad spike. I don't... No, 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 Drew. The, the first time was the railroad series of graduating, like, um, you know, your grandma's uh, needles that she uses for, uh, for knitting? Yeah, graduate. Like they jam those yeah. all the way down your penis. Right. And, um, but then uh, that didn't work, so we went to a surgical surgery, Ooh. cutting it open. Nice. With, with knives. What did you do to forks. deserve this? What actually, what caused your penile... I've done friction? a lot of things to deserve it. Was this a I masturbatory really, injury? You would know better than me. I don't know what happened. I mean, I certainly I do masturbate a lot. I he did. He did hurt his penis in junior high masturbating. How did Corolla escape without a penile injury? That's what I want to know. That's, because we're we're cut out of a different cloth. I'm oh, burlap. That's right. that's right. And he's velvet. Okay. Yeah. yeah. You understand? That's what I think. Corollas of. were meant to masturbate. When I think of each of you, that's what you I think know, about. You know when you watch those nature films and you go, "How can that polar bear sleep on a block of ice yeah. with seventy mile an hour winds?" And then you go, "Eh, he was just made to do that." Yeah. That's what it's like when you see a film of me beaten off. Hey, Adam, yeah. can you and Jimmy use the same mic? Well, your, can your, your mic sounds like s. I. I, I we will, but I can't. There's a third mic. Actually, I, I can't can promise you we won't start stop make start making out at some point. Oh, this oh, would yeah. be great. Yeah. Get it on the internet. Yeah. Yeah. You know, I could switch those pretty easily. Hold on, Drew. Let me you you fill. I'll fix this. All right. Oh, oh this All should right. be good. Yeah. Don't worry. Drew. Oh. <laughs> Let's go to some calls. Tell about how you played seven-and-a-half-man football please, in high please. school. Eight-man football. And that you were, uh, you were uh, student body president of a class of uh, 21. Twelve, be fair. All right. Oh, it, these don't fit. They're not the same. G- Jimmy, Jimmy sounds uh, better than you did a moment ago. But I sound better now, home. right? Yeah, you sound fine now. Jimmy's taped an M80 to the third <laughs> microphone, and he's keeping his fingers crossed. <laughs> you can't put, can you pod this one Did you guys come not? right out of the strip club to the, to the booth there? No, but we're no, there afterwards. But I, I had a cocktail or two. Oh, no kidding. 
But you, you, you know, you, you were know, at a strip club, weren't you? You know, it's funny. Come no, on. but come on. No, but my life has become a strip club, so I no longer have to go into one. Okay. Outdoors is now a strip club. What do you mean? Me. You know, it's funny. Just shut your pie hole for a second. You, I, I, whenever I tell our program director Kevin Weatherly why I should be able to do these remotes, how yeah. come no one can tell, yeah. and it goes off swimmingly Here we without go. a hitch. Here we go. This is what happens. Yeah. That's the kiss of death. Well, yeah. you're relying on um, the fact that he's sound asleep by this time. He has no <laughs> yes. idea what's going on. That's right. Yeah, I don't know. We can't figure this out. We're gonna All right, so so this, this mic's We're doing no fine. Good. No, everything is well, good right now. Well, yeah, be, because, because my, my tongue is in him yeah, now. We're French kissing <laughs> right now. Where is you your understand? tongue? In where? It's in Jimmy. Okay. You know that? It, his urethra is just big enough uh, okay, for me to okay. dart okay. my tongue down nice. now. <laughs> why, don't we, why don't we take some calls? How about that, guys? All right. Does that Whatever. sound good? Yeah. yeah. Fine, fine. Yeah, sorry, sorry right. to break up the, the joy here, the, the party. Go but. ahead. No. Oh, you know what we got to do? Huh. We, we got to plug Crank Yankers. Oh, yeah. That's why, that's that's why, why Jimmy's here. Goddamn right. right. That's I want to go to Hawaii! Yay! 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 I want to go to Hawaii! Yay! Yeah, that's coming out uh, this Sunday, 10.30, right after the man show. Hey, hey, hey. Drew, isn't Drew Jimmy has, here to plug this? Yeah, has Crank know. Mania touched you yet, Drew? Oh, I'm overcome with it. Okay, because it, it's going to be big. We've been getting spectacular reviews. I, I don't know that. if you've seen I them. I heard that, yes. Thank you. The Thank critics you very much. Are, once again, agree. Thank you. And um, the show comes on Sunday, 1030. It's on After the Man Show. It's on Comedy Central, of course. And it's prank phone calls voiced by Adam, voiced by me, voiced by a whole bunch of different people. Um, and uh, we are uh, comics, and um, we make puppets, and the puppets do the voices of the crank calls. Drew, let me tell you something you're going to be happy to hear about. Yeah. Uh, we got uh, two stars in the New York Post today, yeah. Crank Anchors did. Oh, yeah. You know what? I'm down to minus six stars now. Not bad, Adam, huh, buddy? There you go. And chipping away. Did your buddy review your show, Tom Michels? Oh, that fat fag? No. <laughs> okay. I don't know if he did. <laughs> Are you talking about the big fat fag, Tom <laughs> Shales, that one? All right. No. I hope he does so I can tell him to kiss my ass. <laughs> If you well, long to boff it so badly. Adam, you, All look, right, let's take some just, calls. Just because you have a new show doesn't mean you've developed any showmanship. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Stop uh, preening smugly and let's take some calls. This is Vincent at 16. Vincent? What? Hi, Vince. What's up, man? You tell us. Um, well, I was at my girlfriend's house. We had a minimum day, right? And we didn't know her sister had minimum day. And she was giving me head in the room, and the sister walked in, and she caught us. And now she's telling us, well, you have to take me here, you have to take us here. Everywhere we go, she wants to go, or she'll tell the mom. How old is the sister? The sister's about 11 to 12. Mm. No, that sounds bogus. Yeah, it doesn't quite fit together right. Where does she want to go? Well, when we go to the movie, she'll make us take because She's really kind of like attached to her sister, and she wants to go everywhere with us. When I want to go to the movie, when I take her to the movie, she wants to go. Is she tr is she to... actually trying to blackmail you? Is she just trying yeah, to... Yeah, she's, she's telling us, well, if you don't take me, I'm going to tell mom. Or is she trying to protect her sister from you? No, she's blackmailing. Right. Yeah, she's You tell her she's got to give you oral, too, or she can't go. <laughs> she Jimmy just wrote that down. <laughs> <laughs> she, she made me take her to the mall and buy her clothes. And no way. I don't, know. I, I don't believe it. Yeah, I don't really either. Look, what? you tell, this is, hey, listen, small fry, this is between her sister and her. You need her to handle this. And I just went up on this microphone like yes, crazy. Yes, oh, much better. Daniel, Daniel, much Daniel, better. Daniel, don't. <laughs> See, but I'm scared because I'm, it's like, I'm older than her. Wait a minute. And I want her, I don't want her mom, I don't want her mom, like, because her mom's a Christian, like, she's all into that. You can't have sex until you're married. All right, but you tell your girlfriend to handle her little sister just like I would have handled my little sister or Jimmy would have handled his little brother. You hey. understand? That's the job. Is Daniel it's like, not his business. Is Daniel potting the volume up and down on that damn microphone? Just like some sort of crazy uh, chimpanzee? Jim, oh, Jimmy's now farting into the microphone. <laughs> and oh, my God, no! Oh, my God. It, and uh, Daniel dumped. Uh, Daniel spilt a daiquiri onto the control board, and Jimmy just farted up the mic. Jimmy, wow! God wow. bless you. God bless you. Wow! And and let me tell you something. This Jimmy has uh, his his gas is uh, nose no no equal. Adam. No equal, Drew. How many hobo? no? How many hobo power? Fifteen hobo power out of a possible ten. 
<laughs> horrible, horrible gas. Stop it. You're embarrassing. Right into the face. You're embarrassing. Jesus me. Christ, at what age is this going to get old for you, Kimmel? <laughs> Please, I'm the host of a new, very big talk show. I don't need this kind of depiction. All right. Oh, All my right. God. Drew, pick, pick a good call. Pick a nice young chick. Oh. Oh, man. Can you smell that? If I open a window and, and the jet stream's going the right way, you're going to get a whiff of that in about five minutes. Lisa, wow. you know what? Uh, uh, Dan Rather's going to smell it down the hall there in a few moments. Yeah, really? Dan Rather's picture just fell off the wall. <laughs> Dan would rather die than smell this. <laughs> Lisa, 29. That's me. Hi, Hi Lisa. What's up? Um, first of all, oh, man. Oh, Jimmy and Adam, love you guys. Love yeah. you. Thank you. Thank you. You wouldn't love me so much if you were in this room right now. <laughs> now you'd stab him with a number two pencil. Okay, and Dr. Drew, no yeah. disrespect mm. to your wife, but I am so obsessed with you. Oh, interesting. Okay, so anyway, my question <laughs> is... <laughs> you sound like the uh, professor from Gilligan's Island. <laughs> yeah, Fascinating. I'll compute that in my hut later. <laughs> <laughs> oh, goodness. Okay, so my question is, every time um, I get G-spot stimulation or I'm about to have a G-spot orgasm... I feel like I want to cry. Mm. What? A juice box? Jeez, juice box. <laughs> oh, she juice said a juice box. <laughs> They've been hanging around your kids too long. <laughs> Every time she gets a tropical punch. <laughs> really? Wait how old are you, Wait Lisa? You guys Wait, how old is right. Lisa? I'm 29. 29. Did you guys right. spend the evening with Snoop or something tonight? <laughs> no. no. We're just no. punchy because we've been up for a long time. That's all. Uh, Lisa, is it, is it, you know, sometimes when people are like, like they exercise really hard or they exert themselves real hard, that sort of there's an emotional release where they sort of feel like crying or, or sort of, <laughs> yeah. I, I, or like when Jimmy farts onto their face. <laughs> yeah, well, that's pain. Like that's, weeping. That's pain. That's different. Right. This is sort of release, like an attention. Is that attention. a second? Is there another one? <laughs> it's the same one. <laughs> 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 oh my god! Yeah. Uh -huh. So so what? I'm sorry. Honey. The juice box. <laughs> <laughs> what were you saying? Her juice box is I, is I've full. I'm trying to research it to find out why this is happening. But no, I can't people. Find the well, all right. Listen. Do you have you had any trauma around sexuality? No, not at all. Okay. Some people that just feel women feel a sense of of sort of a crying as a release with that kind of orgasm with a very tense orgasm. Do you, do you feel that? Like it's yeah, a good crying? it's exactly what it's like. Yeah, that's all right. All right. It's, it's well, a, don't it's worry about it then. Well, it's embarrassing. No, the, listen, well, guys are happy when hey. they've done something. When they there's something tangible has been produced, they're into yeah. it. Yeah. Look I what I did. Look what I did. What? I had dinner with a guy tonight who was talking about a girl he went out with, and she started crying uh, at, the, at the moment, and uh, it was very disturbing to him. Very, very, very disturbing, and really, like, killed the whole deal. Oh, that, was, yeah. that was probably leading up to the moment. Yeah, I, I agree with Jimmy. You should kill yourself, Lisa. I <laughs> showed her a picture of Jimmy, and that's why she started crying. Yeah. How yeah. dare you? <laughs> All right. Hey, Lisa, this is just you. I mean, if you if there's not some latent thing that's coming out that you need to work out or yeah, some, some I, I trauma worry. from the past, no, then you're fine. And this is the problem with you women. We, we can't get a bead on any of you. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, I, w I want women to be like, like as if I'm a mechanic, and I see... I see a sh like a '84 Chevette come in, and I know it. And then the next '84 Chevette comes around, and I know it. No. I can fix it because I fixed the last one. No, that is you know, that's the, the way you should be. It's not well, the human. That's the way men are. If women right. had a make and model, then we could figure this out. Right. But women don't have makes or models. That's and right. That's what they need to be well, given. Each on one the is different, birthday. Jim. Each right. one is different. Right. But you listen, uh, they're not all totally different. Maybe there's like. 75 varieties, like there are of cars, right? Right. right. There you go. No, and you like 7,500. Yeah, but they're they're all they're all and they've they've all been damaged in in during in the delivery process somehow, and they all have their own quirks and and it, it's just a mess. I'm done. I'm going gay. <laughs> speaking That's of it. speaking of Lisa and going gay, your your friend, the comedian that was in uh, on Greg the Bunny, Lisa, right. Lisa Lisa Silverman. No, Sarah yeah, Silverman. Sarah, Sarah Silverman. Silverman. Sarah Silverman. Yeah. She made out with a girl tonight on that show. Really? Yeah. It was, was, it a, a, was it a puppet girl or a no, real girl? No, a real one. A real, real one. Jesus actually, Christ. Actually, it was not on TiVo, so I don't know actually when it actually aired. But uh, You TiVo Greg the Bunny? My kids did. Are you hot? Uh, really? Yeah. That's nice. Yeah. That's nice. Well, like you should show, show those kids Crank Anchors that yeah. they use on Sunday night, yeah. Drew. Okay. Okay. Your kids would really Hawaii. like... Yay! 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 Is this going to be kid-appropriate material? Yes, no, you should definitely show this to your kids. Yes, it's perfect. It's after okay. the man show. I would think it'd be even worse than the man you show. You would think, you would think, but, and yet, no. Nah, it's a puppet show. 
That's what we had in mind. That's our target audience. Yes, children. Oh. Young children should watch this show. Oh, my God. <laughs> oh, my God. All right, God. Go, bring up the next call. Chris, Drew. 17. Chris. Hey, how you guys doing? Good, Chris. What's up? Hey, um, earlier tonight, I had um, sexual intercourse with my girlfriend. Mm -hmm. yeah. And um, we did not use any protection, and I ejaculated inside her. Sweet. All right, so she needs to get the morning after pill? All right, well, she's on birth control right now. But, Wait a minute, where inside her? What? Where inside her? Inside her vagina. Oh. The vagina? <laughs> Jimmy's a big fan of anyone who says vagina. <laughs> Chris, we, I'm confused by your question. She's on birth control. She's on birth control. Not, what do you, no, why? I was wondering the chances of her getting pregnant. One out of 10,000. Really? All right. Um, also, I, um, I was talking to her about if she did get pregnant, um, if, she had an, if she would have an abortion. And um, she said there was, like, no chance. And, like, I was running... Hey, Chris, she's on the birth control pill. Is and this, this happened uh, tonight, by the way. And yeah. we already had this talk. <laughs> she's going to deliver about noon tomorrow. Oh, no. <laughs> Jimmy's oh, farting my. again. <laughs> oh, no! That sounded like he had, like, a diarrheal stool right there. <laughs> <laughs> it's a real stool. That was the name of his band in high school. I, I can't believe it. Yeah. Oh my god. Oh, wow. What a coincidence. Oh my wow. god. Wow. But you know what? B because uh, because I'm such a uh, uh, a glutton for punishment. A... No. Oh, 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 oh. That's what I love about Adam. He can't help but have a sample of it. It doesn't matter how bad he knows it is. He has to try some. For him, it's Jimmy, great comedy. Jimmy's, what are you talking Jimmy's about? fart is such a classic smelling it fart is, yeah. too. Like if there was a scratch and sniff dictionary <laughs> under the word fart, this is exactly what they would use. Yeah. Wow. It's just. It's. It's just. It just sings fart. I, I've got... You know Anders, what I mean? There's I, no... I got There's Anders no questioning. Give me the grouper face here, and I got Brian doing touchdown dances every time I, you guys I, do this. I know, but, but Drew, do you know how sometimes a guy farts, and you walk in, and you go, well, who, who, who's, someone order a Denver omelet? What is, cat, cat box? It smells like something specific, yeah, something yeah, weird, right. something, something kind of weird. Like I, I, I smell a, yeah, I smell macaroni and cheese, and yeah. it turns out, but not Jimmy. <laughs> no, you walk, you drive into the city, and you go, Jimmy farted. Oh my God! Oh and so man, what, who's looking at you guys? Is Matt there? Thank you. No, Matt is not here. Daniel's Bill. in there. Daniel is here. Yeah, he's in, in, the, here. in the room with you. No, he's in the. He's safely in the <laughs> confines of the, the next room. Oh, oh my God. God! All right, go give us another call. And and so Chris doesn't need to worry no, about this uh, birth control. No. And and listen, but this this brings up a point. Remember all those crazy, stupid. Um, hypothetical conversations you would have when you were a young man with your lady that could go nowhere but to hell mm -hmm. and could cause nothing but pain. Mm -hmm. Like, if we did, if you were pregnant, I would want you to get an abortion. And I, I wouldn't want to take you to a clinic. I'd like to beat it out of you with my fist. And then they start crying and they get all weird and then you never get laid. If you were on a boat for 25 years with nothing but the captain of the football team... <laughs> Would you have sex with him? <laughs> right. And then they go, well, I don't know. Maybe I'd give him a hand job at year 18. You bitch. You whore. You stinking bitch. <laughs> you whore. But, Jimmy, you still do this kind of crap with Corolla, right? For a million dollars, would you? Uh, Jimmy, listen. I, and, and Maybe you can clear this up, Drew, because Jimmy and I got in a big argument some years ago that I said you could live off of tap waters and churro. <laughs> churros. Tap water and churros for a year. And Jimmy said you would die. Uh, right. You <laughs> might not die, but you get quashiorcore probably. Quashiorcore? Protein, pro, pro, protein malnutrition. All right, but you'd make it the year? You might. Yes! <laughs> you might. And you, might die. and you would have sex with that captain? Oh, of course. Yeah! <laughs> All right, one more call before we go to break, Drew. Jesus, between the uh, gas and the uh, sharing the same, it's comical sharing the same mic yeah. with the uh, with the gas bag. Over Matt, there. Is, Matt is eighteen. <laughs> hey, wait, wait, hey, could we could we set up a pup tent in here too, or we could climb into a mummy bag or something together in a sixty nine position? Maybe we could stick and our I, heads in one of those astronaut helmets. Hey, I'll tell you what. Yeah, let's put a plastic trash can over both our heads, and I'll finish the show with a cell phone while you fart. Somehow, the fact that Jimmy has a nighttime talk show now makes this poignantly comical. <laughs> yeah, that's funnier, right? Yeah, it's yeah. much funnier. <laughs> I'll fit right in. Matt. All right. Matt? Yeah. How old are you, Matt? I'm um, 18, man. Good times. What's your question? Well, I called it to tell you all something, but first I want to know, Jimmy, what the hell have you been eating? <laughs> no, it doesn't What doesn't haven't matter. I been eating? I'm in New York. 
Pasta for uh, all. Uh, <laughs> all right. Okay. What I was calling I, I've say. seen Jimmy. I've seen Jimmy uh, drink tap water and eat styrofoam, <laughs> packing peanuts and produce huge gas, <laughs> and, and just a steady diet of, of sawdust and kitty litter and hose water, and he would stink up this joint. Yep. Believe me, he could eat just charcoal briquettes, and he could stink up the house. <laughs> Yeah, that's talent, Matt. One day, when you're older, you'll understand. Keep trying. Keep working at it. Uh, maybe get an internship. That's right. <laughs> keep your foot in the toilet and keep reaching for the shower curtain. <laughs> All right. Uh, what I was actually calling for was uh, I talked to Adam about 10 months ago. I uh, was with this, I was, had this friend of mine that was a girl, and uh, I had feelings for her. And you told me to go for it, you know? Gay feelings? No, no, for her. Oh. All right, okay. And and what happened? And I'm um, just calling to let you know, man, we are engaged. Oh, cool. And I just oh, want really? to say thanks, man. Well, now I'm telling you to dump her. I've got to break it off. But. Just ten, ten months ago, you, you, didn't, you, you hadn't even laid one on her, and now you're engaged? You have they have a child. For wow. You're 18, right? He's 18. All right, let's have a nice long engagement, all right? Like four years. At like, least. like, I want you to have a longer engagement than uh, Siegfried and Roy have at uh, MGM. <laughs> or whatever the hell they are. Mirage. No. Yeah. All right, the Mirage. All right, Matt? All right. Drew, you put them on hold? I did, because we have to go to break. Good. I'm in a lot of pain here, Drew. I've got some farting to do. Yeah, but Jamie, please, just punish him. He, he has really hurt me a couple yeah. times yeah. on his own <laughs> That's products. That's nights. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And so, yeah, I, sweet. Oh, please, yeah. I, I'm enjoying every second of this. And Thank having God been, it's, been delivered by yeah. a big star it makes it especially Drew, enjoyable. Drew, I got an ass, ass full of karma for him right now. <laughs> yeah, you got a car full of asthma. Is that's, my, that's my book style, Ass Full of Karma. <laughs> <laughs> All right, it's uh, Love Line. I'm uh, here in New York with the uh, great and fartful Jimmy Kimmel, <laughs> Dr. Drew, back in LA. <laughs> and uh, we'll be back right after this. Hey, Love Line. Phone number here. Not yet stated that once tonight. 1 800 L O V E 191. I'm Dr. Drew. I'm over here on the West Coast. I have Mr. Kimmel and Mr. Corolla. Are you still alive on the East Coast? Yes, we is. But, We're uh, fine. I, I think it smells fine in well, here. I'm, you're I fine, the problem but it's your ass full of karma that's killing things. So. That is right. <laughs> That'd be a great CD name. <laughs> yeah, I'm I'm clinging to life. And you know, you know what it makes it makes it worse is when you step out. It's like climbing out of the jacuzzi and then jumping back in. It's it's painful. Right. I mean, I stepped out of the studio for three minutes and then opened the door and was hit with a hot wave. Yeah, me too. Of me just too. napalm ass <laughs> right in my your, face. Your brain will even screen out stuff like awful Kimmel farts. Me, you know what I mean? It, I mean, it means your brain doesn't even detect it. Your brain won't screen out anything. You know what I mean? You 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 nothing gets past your brain. Right. It's his nose. Uh, really is. No, no, an no, ant, it's an true. Ant, an ant uh, moves across the table and Adam can't, can't work. It's over. The day's done. Yeah, I mean, how can I operate with this under these conditions? Well, exactly. Because I'm a pro, Drew, and you can learn a lot from me. Indeed, I could. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Uh, Crank Yankers is the name of the show. It is uh, coming out uh, this Sunday. This show is funny, Drew, and I want all of America to know it. It's on uh, After the Man Show coming up this Sunday at 10.30. It's really oh, I was thinking this is embarrassing, yes. but I have to. I have a little <laughs> gas. Yeah. No. Um, yeah. You seem no, very I'm embarrassed, sorry. Jimmy. Yeah, very yeah, embarrassed. I am. I mean, <laughs> oh, I'm sorry. Hey, Jimmy, can you go back to the old mic? Uh, and Adam. Old. Oh, yeah. no. <laughs> He's fine over here with Adam. Oh, yeah. God. <laughs> Adam. The great... I'm telling you, the great thing about Adam is he can't help but sample a little of each one. No, it's like, listen, <laughs> we, we, Drew, you work with these junkies all night, right? I mean, it, they know it's bad for them. They know it's destroying them. They you know gotta, gotta it's taste physically it. hurting their body, yeah, but they gotta. they got to chase the dragon. That's right. I have to chase a puff the brown dragon every time Jimmy's ass comes in. This is we call novelty seeking. It. You're novelty seeking. Yeah. Hey, you guys are acting like children. Let's get them All right. to the call. <laughs> this is, is it, Drew, if you could, you know how when someone breaks wind, how you want to go to the other side of the street? Yes. Imagine you two just tucked in talking to the same, in the same microphone oh in a small God. cloth padded room. This gives me great <laughs> joy. It's way too hot. Great yeah, joy. cloth is absorbent. All right. Uh, who yeah. are we talking to, Drew? We're talking to Dan, who's 18. Hmm? Dan? Yeah. Hey, what's, what's up? up? Hey. Hey, uh, Adam, Jim, nice, nice talking to you. How you doing? Jim. 
Hmm. Good. <laughs> Good. Thanks, Dan. I'm fine. Thank By you. By the uh, way, I'm not really one guy. What the hell have you been eating? Uh, That's um, just it. A lot of things, actually. Uh, I've been in New York for a few days, so I like to sample a lot of different foods, many of which give me gas. Have you I, eaten I, a rat did, by any chance? No, I have not. I think no. I'm done with Dan. Okay. <laughs> with too many jack offs. Yeah, you guys are too enough jack offs tonight, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, you know, you. When it comes to Jimmy's ass, it, it's like my, my sister, you know. I can talk about my sister. Right, right. But I don't want the other school, school right, boys right, talking yeah. about, about Yes, yeah. I can bang Jimmy. and I mean, I can talk about Jimmy's ass, but I, I don't like the callers doing it. Rachel that. is 15. Thank you. Rachel. Hi. Hey. Um, I have two questions. Um, I'm on birth control. Yep. And uh, when I've been smoking cigarettes and pot and... Mall, my my friend told me that I can't be doing that because it's going to mess up the birth control. Well, the, it's the cigarettes don't mess up the birth control; they increase the risk of taking the birth control. Like, what do you mean? Well, that there's not in your age group so much, but over the age of say thirty and forty, you can swallow the cigarette by that, mistake, thinking it's a pill. That women who smoke. Some, my third sister went that way. And take the pill, or at the increased risk of having what are called vascular events, vascular problem, blood clots, that kind of these even harder. What about ex, uh, ecstasy? Well, <laughs> you're 15, you're taking ecstasy, you have bigger problems than worrying about your birth control, I'm afraid. She's got the pot, she's got the birth control, she's got the cigarettes, she's got the ecstasy. What else do you have, yeah. Rachel? That's it. That's yeah. it. How's finishing school going? I've already finished, uh, well, I'm out of school, I'm on break. Mm. Oh, okay. Yeah. You, what are you, in the 10th grade? Yeah, I'm going to 11th. You're a pretty good student? Uh, yeah. No. Yeah. Jesus Christ. <laughs> Honey, what, what, what aren't you putting in your mouth? <laughs> Is there anything? All I take is beans and pot and What's mm. uh, Oh, with the S for it. All right, is she still there or did you hang up she's on her? She's still there. You can talk okay. to her. Okay. Well, how about we convince her to cut out one of the things she's doing other than birth control? The ecstasy. Cut out the, the that's ecstasy. That's the thing. That is the, the thing that's going to actually damage her brain. Okay, so the, the pot won't really do anything when it's mixed with the birth control, right? Mm -hmm. and, and the cigarettes will have a, a negative effect, but that's over, over the course of many years, and, right? And that negative effect is a risk of taking the pill, not the effectiveness of the pill. Right. Okay. All right. So maybe, uh, Rachel, you could cut out the uh, ecstasy? Yeah. 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 Give that up for Lent. Yeah. All right. Make your parents proud. Jesus Christ. I don't have the name on this one. What's your name? <coughs> Hello? Hello. Hi, what's your name? Um, Amy. Amy, hi, Amy. Amy's 27. Yeah. All I can think about is my next fart. <laughs> Me too. <laughs> oh, my God. I can't believe I'm here. What's uh, up there, Amy? Uh, I just had my mom die. Um, Jimmy and, farted. <laughs> no, unfortunately, I wish that was all it was. Uh, she died May 3rd. Mm. And Sorry I just was wondering that. if you guys knew of any kind of coping or... What happened? Why'd she die? Uh, it was a big surprise. Um, she... Went like into a party? She, no. Oh. Um, congestive heart failure. Uh, how old is she? Uh, 62. And she'd never had heart disease before? Uh, she'd been having fainting since March and did not tell anybody. But she I, never knew that she had heart disease? No. Wow. So she had a cardiomyopathy, huh? Yes. And from blocked vessels or from a virus? or from It was what? a dysrhythmia. She, but what was the muscle disorder from of her heart? Uh, Don't know. She had... That's all I know is they, they just hit, said on the autopsy there was a history with congestive heart failure, mm -hmm. cardiomegaly. Yeah, which is cardiomyopathy. It's just the, the muscle of the heart is damaged badly. Yeah. And I'm right, sorry to right. hear about this. Let, I didn't, let's, let's get to the right. coping part. Did, you know, in the hospital. Say, hold on, Drew. Right. Wait a second. Um, this is why she's calling us. That's right. I'm going to ask about the hospital. Hey. But they say that laughter is the best medicine. Oh, my God. And Crank Yankers, which is coming on 1030 <laughs> Sunday night, this yeah. Sunday, following the man show. God, I'm acceptable. No, it'll, it'll help you. For just that, was it half hour? Half hour. Yeah. But half hour to forget about your problems. I mean, that's really what the reward is for us. I mean, as comedians, that's all we get. It's a half-hour laugh hour, really. Right. Amy? But <laughs> yes. Did the, did the hospital give you any... The hospital usually have grief counseling groups, that sort of thing. Well, kind of a I'm in a different this. state than my mom passed away in. Okay. Is there a hospital nearby where you are? Oh, yeah. Yeah. Call and just ask for grief grief groups. They, they'll they have referrals for you. Grief and yeah, it is okay. the kind of thing that does well in... Cancel your cable if you have it. 
<laughs> and and it, it's the kind of thing that that process that, that's helpful to be in a group process. It, the, the, that kind of support you get from a group really does. They help do. I, my grandmother that. goes to one of those grief groups, and now uh, the, everyone there has lost a spouse, and now they want to kill my grandmother. <laughs> well, <laughs> she's there to give grief. That's right. Not they've to handle. They'll turn their focus on her. And, and, and her actually, that, that's actually going to be one of the problems with Amy. Is that most of the people in the uh, group are going to be much much older than her, but there yeah. may be some young people there too. And it is important to find people who are young. <laughs> Who've lost somebody unexpectedly? That that would be. Uh, Amy, thing. do you have a, a husband or a boyfriend? Or? I've got a boyfriend. How's he doing? <laughs> oh, he's trying to put up with me. Is he? Uh, is he? But is he doing a decent job with this? Because this is c- kind of make or break things for him, right? Uh, we kind of got into it the other day. Yeah. See, he's I, I back s- off. Yeah, guys have to pretend to care in these times of tragedy, oh, right? No. No, I'm serious. I'm just saying that to all you guys. You got to suck it up. I mean, right? He, did he screw up? No, he just. I kind of need some more independence. I think right now. Oh, he's putting the, he's putting the squeeze on you. Yeah, I think he's probably listening right now. Oh, all right. Well, you cut him loose. Oh. Good. Maybe he'll see you in the grief counseling thing. <laughs> <laughs> you just yeah. got dumped. It, so does it get better? What? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah, it does. Yeah, but, of course you, it does. You, it but you, you have to deal with it. If you don't deal with it, if you try to just swallow it or ignore it, there will be a price we paid for that. Okay. All right, Amy. Yeah. Thank right. you. Good Take good care of yourself. Sorry about your mom. Okay. Let me, Thank right. you. Bye bye. Let me break. Let me break down the They're grieving just, you process. You start saying the word break, break, and you scare me. No, because I went through this with Jimmy slash fart. <laughs> First, it's denial. <laughs> what do you mean? You couldn't have farted again. Then it's deal making. <laughs> yeah. Then it's like. Okay, if he doesn't fart again, I'll I'll, <laughs> I'll sit in purgatory for an extra fifteen years. It'll you be said, worth it. But you said begging then, him. Then anger. Yeah, <laughs> I'm gonna I'm gonna jump on you like a whoopee cushion <laughs> until every ounce of that demon comes out of you. And at the end, forgiveness. Hey, if I had one, I'd let it fly myself. Acceptance. <laughs> right. Acceptance. That's right. Forgiveness. Sorry. And then forgiveness. Yeah. <laughs> All right, hey, Drew. Yeah. We got another call. No. <laughs> Come on, go po- find somebody, would you? Start right. doing your job, would you, buddy? Tyler's 16. <laughs> yeah. What's up, Tyler? Hello? Hey, Tyler. Hi. Hey. What's up? You know, we had David Allen Greer in here last night, and every time we got a call from Sacramento, we freaked out. Oh, my Why? goodness. I... Because of the Kings. Oh yeah! Oh yeah! Mr. Sports announcer Kimmel, why is he upset about that? Oh, no, why? Why would Dave Allen Greer freak out about it? He's a Laker fan, crazy Laker fan. Oh, I got you. I didn't know he was a big Laker fan. <laughs> He's not. It's just it's black pressure. Oh, Sorry, poor I'm guy. For the Kings. Yeah, I'm sure. That's yeah. Me. All right. Yeah, so, how was um, David last night? By the way. Oh, he was excellent. He didn't show up. First of all, we, we had he to get, we had to hustle his ass in. Oh, uh, really? Yeah. But, but he didn't show up, was well, he? Well, you know, we, Ann and I both asked Ann, I mean, you sure we can call him? So, no, no, I got under control. Got under control. He didn't know what time to show up. So he showed up around 10 He showed up around 10 15. He thought the show started at 10 17. <laughs> he sat down, the show was underway, and he goes, well, You start? The show's on? What, like, sh- shocked. Shot. No, 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 actually, he did, he did a great job. All right. Yeah, yeah. Really good job. All right, what's up, Tyler? All right. In fact, um, don't bother coming back. Yeah, first Bye. of all, I want to say it's an honor talking to all three of you. You guys are an inspiration. Um, Thank you. But I have been, um, well, not have been, I have been smoking pot and doing mushrooms for the past two years chronically. Mm. Since you were 14, uh, wow. my God. Yeah, um, but I am now currently clean, and mm-hmm. I've been clean for over uh, 100 days now. Are you in a program? Are you just absent? Yeah, I'm working in a and Lord, uh, God doing, bless you, boy. Yeah, at 16, doing, that is that is a tough thing to do. Good for oh, yeah. you. I mean, I, I went to, when I went through detox, um, I was admitted into a institution for 72 hour evaluation. Yeah, yeah. It, Were you suicidal or something? Hmm? Excuse me. Were you suicidal? Um, yeah, it was yeah. suicidal depression. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I got, I got a, I got a revelation myself. I've been off Jimmy's ass for uh, about a minute forty five seconds <laughs> now. I've not smelled anything. Congratulations! Yeah, so think about yeah. jumping out one, the window though. One day at a time. You know. Yes, very true. Well, that's great, though. I mean, it's, again, to have the uh, sort of maturity and capacity for recovery at sixteen is a great thing. So good for you. Well, listen yeah, to his voice. Listen, to I know. Yeah, he sounds mature. Doesn't he? Yeah, yeah. Well, yeah. yeah. There's that, and also, um, ever. I mean, I don't know. What is wrong with me? Um, 
but there is that still I'm still an addict, you know. Of um, course. That will no, not that. anymore. Not anymore. Not after no, after no, perfectly days. cured, drop out of the program, right, Drew? I'm sorry. <laughs> no, that you will always be an addict, so. But, like, I don't know. It's, it's chronically happening. I keep bending my neck and arching my back um, constantly all the time. Um, and every once in a while, my hands and my um, feet will start to shake and go numb. And every once in a while, maybe um, once or twice a month, I'll have a gray out. And when well, you've got really Pac-Man fever, clearly. <laughs> you, you, uh, I've seen this before. Th- these, this back stretching, is it in response to a feeling of stiffness, or you just spontaneously go through this arching? It's a spontaneous thing. All I mean, right. I will try to yeah. um, not do it. All right, all right. All right, listen, you, you, you uh, need Tyler. Jimmy's arching his back, and he's, oh. it, my feet have gone numb. He's let another one go. That one wasn't me. <laughs> <laughs> that was Tyler. Oh, my God. Yeah. Tyler. I, tell him what to do, Drew. Here's the deal. I'm try to get it, under the car. It, it actually is important you see a neurologist. These, these things you're having. <laughs> oh, wow. He can't help but smell it. Wow. He covers his Oh. He covers his face, and oh. then he, then he leans down. Oh. I'm sorry, Tyler. Oh. Oh, okay. <laughs> Tyler, we all have problems. It's, no, a, you know, it's it, a pleasure just listening Adam is you. very immature, very <laughs> immature. I can't believe he's behaving like this. All right, that. listen, put Tyler on hold because I can't. Oh, I got to finish with him, problem. God damn it. Let me finish. You, 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 put oh, you let's guys on hold. a nickel for every six-year-old junkie. Hold. Hold. Put them. There, thank you. Tyler. Yes. Okay, here's the deal. These things you're having with the back are called dystonias, and they can be a sign of a dysfunction of the central nervous system. There could have been some damage from the hallucinogenics. Not that you necessarily are going to have chronic disorders, or, but it does require, it does warrant an evaluation by a neurologist. And these brownouts, these grayouts you're having, could be seizures. And, oh my God, they're still, they're still at it. It's brownout. You don't say brownout. I know, well, I've been listening to you guys for so damn long. I can't think about anything but brown. Uh, um, Tell All right, Tyler, but do see a neurologist, okay? And pro- I hopefully, have, I have one more quick question. No, no. go, go. Um, I'm sorry. Yeah, um, but yeah, like I believe I read a study um, conducted by a scientist called Poe, and he said that chronic smoking of marijuana will cause and lead to um, brain dysfunction, such as dyslexia, depression, and such. And I believe no, I no, 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 not dyslexia, no. no. Okay. But the depression you had was for sure related to the drugs you were doing. Okay. All right. So, all right. Well, thank you Good luck, very, Tyler. Very much. Thanks, care, Tyler. Uh, God's me. God's me. <laughs> Let me say this about Jimmy Sparks. <laughs> you, you know how um, you, you have a glass of orange juice and you don't think there could be any more orangey flavor in the world. Yes, yes. And then you, then you look at a block of orange juice concentrate yes. and you go, wow, this is more. Yeah. That's what Jimmy's farts are. Like, it's actually more fart than fart. It's actually a concentrated <laughs> form. That when, it, when it hits the environment, oh it mixes. Oh it mixes. Hold the yeah. I can't it, believe that. It's just, it's just like the orange juice concentrate. It's like it, it'd be just like mainlining that stuff if you wanted a taste for oranges. But here's it's concentrate. But, but it I, comes I, in a concentrate. I, you understand? I, I, we're getting it. We're, we can practically taste it. We, we, we get that so clearly now. But what I find really stupendous about this is that the reality here is you guys sit around all, all day and do this anyway, right? All Not day. All day. All day. Only when I'm able to fart. Yeah. Sometimes he's out on shoots and stuff, and he can't get back to this, fart. This never gets old for you. No, no, but here's the thing. When, it, when he does it in the office, I, I pace around, I open the door, I flap the window, and I, I have a whole ritual that I, I can go through. I but see. See, tonight I'm trapped. It's okay. Yeah. All right, good. And that's, 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 that's the real, that's where the ante has been up. That's the twisting of the knife in yeah. my belly. Speaking of radio show and cross-country trips. Speaking yeah. of trapped. Yeah. Time for break. All right. Okay, we're going to take a little break. Uh, Jimmy Kimmel is here with uh, the you, you special can go, you guest. Can, yeah. ass. And you can go down the hall, walk out the side, walk down the hall, and show them the pictures of Dan Rather. and. Uh, right, we Bill did Brown. on the way yeah, in. That's good yeah. times. Yeah. Uh, I got a rectum full of comedy tonight, <laughs> folks. Stick around. Crank Yankers is the name of his uh, new joint. That's uh, 1030 this Sunday, right after the man show. We'll take a break, and we'll be back after this. Everybody, it's Loveline. I'm Adam Carolla. That is Dr. Drew. Yeah. Special guest star, Jimmy Kimmel, everybody. 
Thank from uh, <clears throat> Crank Yankers, which is uh, coming up uh, this Sunday, 1030 <laughs> on Comedy Central, right after the man show. And uh, let me just say this. If you are currently listening to this show and you enjoy this show, you are... Uh, you're, you're in a real sig- you're in a significant minority. Oh my really? god. My yeah. god. He just let another one go. Drew. No, Jimmy, no. <laughs> yeah, I'm going to start keeping a tally. This is I, good. <clears throat> I'm going to yeah. start keeping a tally. I, I'd say that was 6. Yes. This is like the guy etching the days that go by in a solitary confinement cell or something, right? Right. Like torture. Yeah. This is good stuff. You're missing a lot in here, Drew. <laughs> Let me just talk about Crank Acres for one second, no. if I could. Because it, it, it's a tough concept to understand. I know that Drew is insanely jealous of, of Adam and I, our right. various successes. It, insanely. Sorry. Insanely. I, I know that uh, you don't like to hear about this, but it's the, the show is it's like um, Sesame Street meets the Jerky Boys. It's a puppet show where we're making real crank phone calls, and uh, it's real good. Everyone seems to like it. Hey, Adam. Well. Yes. Jimmy's had a little media training, huh? Yeah. yeah. No, yeah. He, listen, Drew, you know what our problem is, and specifically your problem? You, you just, you won't relish anything, you know? <laughs> I you mean, gotta sell it. You gotta sell it. This this is a really good show, and uh, I think we're doing a service by uh, alerting the uh, young listeners of this show to watch it 10.30 on Sunday night. That's right. Of us not to. That is exactly right. After the man show. That's right. All right. All All right. right. Who do we got next? We're going to talk to Derek. He is 17. Derek. Derek. Hello? Hey, what's up? Hey, uh, I'm on? Yeah. Yeah. All right. Uh, I don't believe I'm already, hey. but whatever it is. Yeah. Me neither. Yeah. What? Yeah. No, no, no. I'm serious. This is true. Hello? Yeah, we're here. Okay. Well, uh, it's just, you know, sometimes I, I, I feel like the desire to be of the opposite sex. Tell me more. What do you mean? Well, sometimes I, I, I'm, I feel like turned off by... Um, behavior of like other guys and like i don't know may- maybe my history with like my dad and my stepdad hasn't been so good but um they've been physically abusive to you well yeah my stepdad was and my dad just he just kind of he left really early and i don't hear from him much all right so understand maybe it's that you really are trying to get back in touch with that male element that was so abandoning to you maybe it's yeah. that you you need to be really so yeah. close that you actually want to you know what I mean? Hmm? Well, wait, wait a minute. Wait, are you saying that you're having homosexual thoughts? No, I don't think I'm a homosexual. I just think that... But if you were a woman, would you have sex with a male? No, I don't think so. Okay, so you'd be wait a... Wait a minute, Drew. What kind of question is that? So I'd, you, I'd have no, sex with a male if I was a woman. That's a good question. No, many, many, many I, male to female transsexuals become oh, a woman. No. Oh, no. Oh, no. <laughs> Adam firing back. <laughs> a little salvo coming Jimmy's <laughs> way. Yeah. Many yeah, male to do female transsexuals do that in order to be lesbians. Yeah, but it, does uh, he want to be a transsexual? No. Uh, no, I, I would never like want to take it to that level. But no, 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 that's not the point. I'm just saying, I, I just I, I just have these thoughts and, you know, I get confused. And, you know, I, I, you know what I the safest thing seven. to do? Do you want to you know dress like be? A, what? He should be a magician. <laughs> yeah, that's a way of not declaring your, your sex. Yeah, it puts you in a limbo, and it's good career training. <laughs> right. All right, but wait a minute. Let me try to get to the bottom of uh, Derek's problem. And by the way, Derek, when I'm in charge, it's yeah. going to be either Derek or Dirk. One of those names is going to be eliminated. There will not be both. Okay. Well, okay. That, that's my uh, name. Now, you, you are attracted to females. Yes. 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 You, you, Right. Do you, do you have a girlfriend? No, I don't. No. I don't okay. really have many right. friends. But okay. you hate and men. You hate and men. And you're not you're not attracted to men. No. But you're, you don't like men. Not not really. I don't like. No. I and don't like. You, do you have any male friends? Um, a few who are nice to me, but for the most part, no. And so does much the smell man. of does the smell of a fart give you a boner? <laughs> no. No. Oh uh, well, we can't. Yeah. I guess we can't talk to him. What? Nothing. Okay. That, that, but the, the deal is, though, you're so unhappy with man, you don't even want to be one. Uh, it's, I, you know, I just, I feel that, I, you know, you know, just listening, even listening to your show, I mean, you know, all those guys out there, they just seem like such screw-ups and stuff, and, you know, what they do in the relationships, and, and what I hear at school, and it makes me sick sometimes, you know what I mean? 
All right, yeah. but you, okay. you don't you don't have any plan to do anything about it. No. Okay, no. So, Drew, put him on hold. All right. Just he, he's confused. He, yeah. he had a bad upbringing. Yeah. Little therapy. He's not gay. Thank God, he's not gay. I don't know. And he might be gay. He's possibly gay. He's probably gay. I'm sure he's gay. <laughs> Derek, you're definitely gay. You're currently inside a man. <laughs> doesn't like farts. <laughs> he doesn't like farts. He may be gay like Anderson. All right. So look. Just take it slow. You don't have to make a uh, declaration to your uh, sexual proclivity at this stage. Or you don't cut your sexual. penis off. Yeah, right. And get a little therapy for stepdaddy who beat you. Right. Drew, okay. let's get one more in before we go to break. It really I mean, is if time. you're gay, wouldn't you like the smell of ass, Adam? Mm-mm. Yeah. It's interesting, but it doesn't, it doesn't work that way. Really? Well. I'm so anti-gay, I can't even smell it because I, I puke. Oh, you can't smell You can't smell ass? No, if I do, it just makes me so nause- nauseated because I know where it's coming from. Yeah. You would you would be in real bad shape in the studio right now. <laughs> I wouldn't be in the studio. I'd be gone. You would be you would be heaving like Jimmy on a fishing boat. Yeah, he, right he's, now. Anderson is outraged and offended at him. <laughs> All right, your buddy. puerile behavior. We got to go to break. That's okay, true. it is uh, love God. line. Yeah, I'm uh, Adam. That is uh, Dr. Drew. Jimmy Kimmel has joined us tonight, and uh, Crank sh- Crank Anchors. <laughs> Crank Anchors is the new show. Ten thirty, Comedy Central Sunday night. We'll be I right back. I want to go to Hawaii. This. Everybody, it's Loveline. I'm Adam Carolla. That's Dr. Drew. Hey, Jim, you ever heard Adam's theme song? I have, but I love it if you want to play it again. Yeah, this is it. This is it right here. This is a song that plays as I enter the trendy bar with my leather jacket slung over my shoulder, well, I bouncing guess when you, when, in slow yeah, motion. When you go to the strip wearing club my tonight. boots. Yeah, like, yeah, chicks checking me out. Wearing your boots. Yeah, this is my song. <laughs> yeah, you can picture me like going... It's like slow motion. And Jimmy, here's what they see. Here's what the chicks see. <laughs> I can't even picture Adam out. <laughs> Never mind in boots. Let me tell you something about what is going on in this room, Drew. <laughs> you still and you're still. You didn't take a break. It's a night in heaven. He, first of all, he just let one fly during my theme song. And how dare you break wind during my theme song? Well, that's my theme song. This is, understand, this is like running out on the field during the national anthem. Do you understand what a slap in the face that is, Kimmel? And number two, Drew, yeah. uh, two, two thoughts. Right. One is, whatever I've done to you in the past, my worst night, yeah. put put two zeros behind that because that's God. what Jimmy is doing tonight. Oh, my God. Number one. Number two... <laughs> number two. <laughs> number two about number two. This studio here is 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 really equivalent to Tupperware. Yes. I mean <laughs> heated I'm, I'm, out, yes. out, in, out in a noonday sun. I am still yeah. smelling Jimmy's first fart. You understand? I mean, I I just opened the door and was hit with a, a wave of gas, like a, like like the b- backdraft ride at the Universal. Here's the comedy, though, is that you were able to identify Jimmy's fart like some sort of special bottle of wine that uh, is you know a certain year and certain yeah, chateau. it's assertive without yeah. being pushy. Yeah, yeah. It's the, the number one fart. Yeah, oh, my That's God, good. this is so enjoy so the bad. bouquet, swirl it around. It's so, uh, so bad. I realize I won't be able to bring these clothes onto the carry on <laughs> on the airplane in four days. They're still going to be that bad. You have to burn them. <laughs> yeah. All right, Drew. Find the next caller, please. Crank Yankers, everyone. Ten thirty Sunday night, Comedy Central. Bing Big is premiere. Twenty one. What? Bing. Bing? Twenty one. Yeah. Yeah, Bing. That's me. Yeah. Yeah, I wanted to talk to Jimmy about having trouble aiming. Yeah. Yeah. It's not aiming. It's a, my penis uh, is defective. It doesn't work like normal penises do. Oh really? And uh, excuse me, it's peni. Yeah, no, no, you're right. It's not peni. Like normal peni do, and um, and uh, there's nothing I can do about it. Yeah, there's nothing I can do about mine either. I have two holes in it. It splits off into a Y. Isn't that nice. Hmm. I had that once. Yeah, they had to. Uh, you, you, why do you have two holes in it? it is like, is it healed in the middle of of the one hole? Well, what happened was I was born with it. I think my mom had gonorrhea or something when she was pregnant with me. Really? Uh, she was a slut. But anyway. Well, Bing's a barrel of laughs. Yeah, Bing's yeah. a barrel of laughs. Anyway. Bing, uh, you yeah. ought to do greeting cards. <laughs> so <laughs> your mom's a slut. Thing. You have two holes in your penis. And yeah. uh, now what? Um, I have a real tough time aiming. And I was just telling 
Jimmy that, you know, I feel where he's coming from, all that good stuff. It's a septate urethra. It's, so it's not, one of them doesn't dead end. They just a septum right down the middle, right? Right, right. All right so a septate urethra. Yeah, that happened to me, and I had to have it sliced open. And yeah. that's what you should do. Oh, you, had, you had the dual action? I well, had the dual action. It comes out of both, yeah. First, I had a very small uh, urethra, as you know. Then they made it bigger, but while it was healing, the middle part healed up. Oh. And so then I wound up having two holes, oh, boy. which was no good. Then they had to cut it open again, and now I have one hole, but it, there's, no, uh, there's no accuracy whatsoever. Yeah. And, there's, and it's completely unpredictable. And his balls are above his penis. Yeah. That's right. <laughs> They're nice. on top. He wears oh, them like nice. a hat. That's yeah, nice. it's a mess down there. When I was like 12 <laughs> like years old, my cannon. mom told me that she was going to have me go to the doctor and he was going to take you know a knife to my penis, and I, I was scared. I cried for days because I thought a doctor was going to come near me with a knife. Me too. Oh, me I, too. I hey, crying. Drew, will you get rid of Bing, please? Well, I don't, I don't know of any evidence that gonorrhea in the mom has anything to do with this uh, septate urethri. So. And, and Kimmel, if you'd start urinating in the sink like moi, it I have, be a I have oh, started have that. You? Yeah, okay, I have started it. I knew you'd, I knew you'd come around. Oh yeah. no! Yeah, another fart. Yeah, I farted again. <laughs> God. <laughs> yeah. Mike is fifteen. Yeah. What's up, Mike? Hi. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I gotta guess. <laughs> you gotta have a little of this. <laughs> Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Oh! Oh! <laughs> oh man! Yep. Wow! It's all natural. <laughs> Christ, what you is sure that? you're not on the juice? What is that in Corolla? What is that? Give him a hammer because, see if he hits himself over the head. No, you know why? Because I'm 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 bothered by the fact that there's a fart floating around the room somewhere and it's gonna sneak up on me. I'd rather <laughs> confront it. That, and you won't get the full effect. <laughs> yeah, Mike. like I'm one of those guys if I if I think there's an intruder in the house, I run downstairs with a bat. I don't I don't hide under the bed and call nine one one. That's the way I approach life. <laughs> it's not for everybody, but it works for me. All right, Mike. Yeah. You give 110%. Yeah, That's right. right. What's up, Mike? Okay. Whenever I shave, I get, like, monstrous amounts of zits pop up. Monstrous amounts? Yeah. And when you don't shave? <laughs> what? When you don't shave, there's no problem. When I don't... Sh well, after I shave, they'll there and they'll go away eventually. Mm -hmm. But if I shave I, again, they pop up. I can help you with this, actually. I know a lot about shaving, actually. Um, do you, what kind of razor do you use? Why do you know a lot about shaving? I, don't I just know. do. I, it's something I've really experimented with and studied. Why? Drew, do you remember? Didn't I give you one of those uh, hot lather dispensers? Yes. Yeah, yeah because I, I'm I'm really uh, involved with shaving. He gave wow. it to me. What kind of a razor are you using? Oh, that's right. Adam passed the one you know. gave to him on to me. Uh, Gillette kind. Okay. That's the problem. This Gillette razor is the greatest razor uh, in history, but it's a little too good for certain people because they're not really zits. They're ingrown hairs. Right. They look like zits and they turn into zits, but you're getting too close to shave. What you have to do is a lot of black people have this this problem right, actually. Right. That's right. You, you have to get stay this with pen. your family and raise your goddamn children. Right. And besides that, though, there's a product, oh. and you go into the black um, beauty uh, supply stores. It's always funny to go in there. First of all, <laughs> and it's a whole new world. But they have something called um, Ten Skin. Is yeah. that what it's called? Yeah. That's yeah. what it's Adam called. And that. you have yeah. to. It takes months to apply it to really get it to work. But once you've applied like it hell for months. Too, right? Yeah, yeah, it's good. But once you've applied it for months, your skin uh, gets conditioned to a point where you can shave and not have a problem. So you, do you use it like a shaving cream? It's more like a lotion. But do you yeah, use you, it when you shave or do you use it... After you shave. After you shave, yeah. Huh. Hey, is this is Mike still there? He is talking about his face, isn't he? Yeah. I, mean, yeah. I just want to make sure. Mike, did you get all that? You know what to do? Yeah, kind of. I don't think we have a black beauty store here. Where are you? Just Utah. Selma. Yeah, oh, oh no, you yeah. definitely don't. <laughs> Call Carl Malone. <laughs> he can help you. Uh, no, I would uh, go on, online then. Look for Tend, T E N D, skin. And here's the other thing, uh, young Mike. You can use uh, Oxy 10, too. You can just lather that on after uh, the infected area. Yeah, after Afterwards. you're done shaving, that'll knock stuff down pretty good, too. Huh. Hey, Jimmy, what about you think about the Kiehl's cream? Uh, I like it. I like it. Yeah, it's nice stuff. Makes yeah, sense. I'm on to the whole um, spread-on cream that comes in the jar now. I have a whole process that I go through. I take a shower. I put this pre-shave oil on my face. Jesus. Well, in the shower, I'll put conditioner from a hair conditioner on my face just to soften it up a little. Oh my I god! I put the pre-shave before you oil masturbate on. or after. No, I don't masturbate in the shower. Oh, wait a minute, Adam, please. 
No, that's his cousin. That's cousin Sal. Sal. Yeah. Yeah. Wait a minute. Didn't you didn't you leave a present for Adam in the shower one time? Well, every once in a while, but this is not. Yeah, yeah. yeah. We might as well get into that. I but actually fired that from sitting on the on the <laughs> toilet into the shower. To be it, fair to it me, it was actually land based. Oh, that that was no, no experience. way. No, he was standing yeah. over the tub. All right, look, yeah. we, we got to tell this story, but I want Jimmy to finish his uh, shaving thing first. So, uh, yeah, I, I got an, a lotion, I, not no, I, uh, an oil, pre-shave oil, which I put on my face. It's really just like oil. It looks like right. olive oil. And then there's a shaving cream that I cover my face with. Then I shave. I use the Gillette uh, um, Sensor XL. Actually, I think they have a, a yeah. step up now. And then um, and then I'll put on some, uh, if there's any blood spots, I put on the styptic pencil. Mm. And then I have a uh, sh- aftershave lotion. Wow. Wow. You know what's funny? It's like he's uh, Rula Lenska when it comes to his facial care, and then he blows a big fart and fans <laughs> it at me with a peachy folder. And it's really an interesting dichotomy. Yes. The great thing is, yeah. look at me right now. I look like Vlade Divac. <laughs> <laughs> he hasn't shaved in three days. Yeah, well, it's too, such a process. It takes hours. Let me, tell you, let me tell you about Jimmy beating off in the tub, but let me say this first, uh, Kimmel. You should hit it. We're at the uh, same hotel. Yeah. Hit the... Uh, I hit the... Uh, the uh, steam bath and then took the shave. What steam tonight. bath? There's a steam bath in the uh, gym floor oh, of the hotel. I, I don't like to go near the gym. Very, very oh, nice to hit that steam boy. bath and then hit a shave. Oh, what a nice fart in that steam bath. Is <laughs> wonderful. Oh. Jimmy, Jimmy and I were, uh, for those of you who have uh, heard this story before, you're hearing it again, tough ass. We uh, stayed at a hotel outside of uh, Seattle for the Final Four when UCLA was playing in it about six, seven years ago. And it was really a motel. Yeah. You know, K-Rock, Trip Reeb, all those cheap sons of bitches. There was, it was a kind of motel that when a car pulled up, the headlights would go into the room that you're in. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> And we were doubled up on this, uh, like, twin-size mattress, and we're having to do the morning show out of Seattle, and it was a good 45, 50-minute drive, and so we're getting up at, like, 4.45 in the morning. Jimmy got up at 4.30, hit the shower. I got up five minutes later, hit the shower after him. It was one of those cheap hotels that didn't have good sewage or drainage, and the tub was still filled with about uh, 14 inches of water. By the time I hit it to take a and, shower, and it's always pretty not, too. It's a hair yeah. and scum, soap scum floating around, right? Right, yeah, right, yeah. It's yeah. Nice. It, Very nice, it, yeah. Really, but all it, that paled in comparison. Yeah, yeah. Well, so I'm taking a shower. I'm not sitting in the tub, but I'm standing <laughs> shin deep in uh, Jimmy's used water. And about halfway into my shower, there's a tap on the door and a friendly <laughs> warning from Jimmy <laughs> saying, uh, "Be careful! I beat off in there." <laughs> And then loud screaming. <laughs> yeah. It was probably uh, capped with a nice fart. <laughs> yeah. Something wrong with me. Yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, I just, I was laying in the other room giggling like a maniac. <laughs> oh. What, the, what, what went through your mind? Is, should I tell him? Should I not tell him? How should I do oh, I was. No. It took too long for him to notice, so I had to yell something in there. I was hoping he just hit it on his own. Oh, my I had, God. I had to have... Uh, my left calf had to have, had to be aborted. Actually, <laughs> By the way, three that months stuff later. when it's floating on water, there's no way to get it off you. I mean, it, oh, it, it, like unless it's like a homing device. My my like uh, missing link, hairy shins. There's probably still some in there. I'm <laughs> sure if you shined a woods light on it, when those black lights through, you could find some of Jimmy semen oh on my, my shin. Oh my god! And you know what? You know what I love about uh, <sighs> men as opposed to women. If a woman did the equivalent of that to her friend, they would they'd still not be speaking. By the way, oh, you can't even headline news. Yeah, that'd be yeah, it. They'd be they'd talking be... about their ass for forty four years. Be, oh yeah, yeah. There, there, there would, there would be, there would be a, a cat fight and followed by a long breakup and then a link, lengthy legal battle. Yeah, yeah. All right, who are we talking to next? We're talking to Bob, who is nineteen. Bob, hi guys, how you doing? Good. What's up? Bob? Good. What's up? All right, my question is uh, for Doctor Drew mainly. Mm-hmm. Um, I uh, about three weeks ago. My friend tells me that uh, he has been masturbating while hanging from his neck, like from the rafters, like he, he ties his uh, his dog leash around his neck dog. And, and masturbates like that. Perfectly normal, perfectly natural. Yeah. Okay. Right. <laughs> Good times. Right. Maybe maybe for you. I've never heard of this before. but um, Drew does do uh, this. Well, that's what that's what you did in the shower, right, Jimmy? <laughs> right. <laughs> yeah. But he, he used to... He used shower to curtain. Yeah, right. shower yeah. curtain, of course. No, but seriously, guys. Um, well, here's the deal, Bob. People people do this, and they don't do it infrequently. It's actually always surprising to me how often this actually happens. 
and not infrequently they will actually kill themselves they actually ad- inadvertently okay. well, that's, that's the problem um about two weeks ago uh they said that he committed suicide yeah that's sometimes those are accidental these guys are masturbating they get going too far they slip off the chair the the rope gets going around their neck and that's oh it. he's dead yeah he's dead holy yeah this happens it does happen yeah. Yeah. but everybody everybody thinks that it's it's a suicide but there's no there's no note and yeah he had, he had a wonderful girlfriend who uh I really appreciate. She's a great friend of mine, mm. and uh, he had good parents. And um, and everybody says that it's a suicide. This is what you call a spooicide. <laughs> yeah. Well, what about uh, so sensitive, Jimmy? What about <laughs> well, what about the fact that his pants are around his ankles, and there's yeah, a you know, tub of Nivea next to him? That's what I'm saying because his parents found him in the garage. And then he and, had told you he was doing this stuff, right? Yeah. Well, he didn't no. come out and tell me. I mean, I kind of had to cry it out of him, but. Uh, Oh, wait, wait, hold on a second. Hold on. Some, something's not working here for me. Okay. Hey, Bob, Bob knows, and Bob is speculating on what, what really causes death. And his parents or anyone else, the authorities would know because they came upon the crime scene. Obviously, you can't clean up when you're dead. So Absolutely. what's the question? The question is, I'm, I'm pretty sure that the parents know that he was masturbating, but nobody else knows. And, well, why does and, anybody like, else need I, to know? I, that's what I'm saying. Should I should I say anything or not? Because no. his girlfriend yeah. is wrong. <laughs> yeah. It's it's important. That, it's important that the town know. Yeah. Maybe you should talk to his parents and come up with a plan with his parents as far as the girlfriend goes. Well, wait a second. But wait, well, if the girlfriend th- she thinks can't he understand that himself? he killed himself, you know, but that would be too weird a discussion, wouldn't it? Yeah, but on the other how, hand... How, 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 by the way, how would you start that conversation? Because you really don't know that the parents know this. They might have gone to the coroner and they may not have told them yet. Who knows? I'd stroll in there and I'd say, let's put our cards on the table. <laughs> Your son <laughs> liked to jack off a, a lot. A bit too much. Yeah. He's in a he's in a better place now where he can what a way to go himself and beat up. Oh, listen, a, cu- a, cu- a couple things. A, my grandmother gave me this speech when I was like nineteen, really? telling me to be very careful uh, but when <laughs> you start doing this. It. I was thinking, um, listen, <laughs> forget about hanging myself. I'm going to put a pistol in my mouth, the old hag. <laughs> you kidding me? This, you, you came my grandmother telling me not to hang myself when I beat off? <laughs> Drew, Drew, seriously, you should cut a PSA. <laughs> Talk to your publicist no, about no, getting I, a PSA. I, but I want to do it with your grandma. Yeah, yeah, yeah that's going to be great. Okay, so this is an interesting dilemma because... You don't want the girlfriend thinking that she was responsible. I mean, when there's a 19-year-old male who kills himself, oftentimes it's over a relationship. And I'm sure she feels a lot of guilt and probably some responsibility for this tragedy. So you don't want her to think that. On the other hand, this is a very embarrassing topic to broach. That's what you're saying, right, Bob? Yeah, and she's, like, manifesting all these things about how, you know, they got in a fight and... uh, yeah, I don't know. I'm I'm starting like to think that. this. Okay, Bob, put Bob on hold, would you please? This could be bogus. Yes, but it could if be. I were Bob, if I were Bob, I would go feel the girlfriend out yeah. and then up in two <laughs> weeks. <laughs> but I would say to her, you know, I would say weeks. to her, look, you don't. Yeah, ten days. You yeah. don't think do you, you don't think you're responsible for this, do you? I mean, how are you feeling? Right. You don't feel guilty. Absolutely. Whatever. And if she said, "Oh my God, I'm going to kill myself. Right. I caused him to do it. I know I did." That's when yes, you uh, pull the right. leash out. I think that's correct. <laughs> the leash. <laughs> well, you got You got to. You got to produce some evidence. Yeah. Jesus Christ. This okay. is not going to work without a demonstration. By the Susie way, Susie is 40, <laughs> 43. Jesus, Drew. Okay, Drew, you have two boys, right? Oh Could you my pick god. Oh this? my god. I mean, st- statistically, it's probably going to happen to one. Oh. I mean, let's be honest. <laughs> hey, st- listen, you're a man of science. Statistically, <laughs> most likely one, maybe one and a half. <laughs> okay. Hey, just, just out of curiosity, did you guys hop out on the 54th Street there and have a drink during the break or something? No. no, no, no. Just, just, just breathing in the gas. I caught Jimmy's second win. <laughs> <laughs> Literally. <laughs> All right. Susie, 43. Susie. Hi, guys. Thank you so much for everything you do for teenagers. It, you're required listening in our house in the evening before the kids go to bed. See? No, no. Thank, Thank you. Thank you, Susie. And well, where do you see Crank Yankers? <laughs> yeah, 1030, well, Sunday night. you know what, Adam? We don't have TV. I'm sorry to say that. Cool. I, I what? Use TV. <laughs> nice. What? Ooh. We don't have TV. Good. That's child abuse. You yank the TV. 
Well, the kids came home and they all they did was sit in front of road rules and and stupid stuff on MTV. Love line. I, I cut the I cut the cable and I ordered the paper and now they actually sometimes accidentally open the paper and start to read. So cool. Oh, it's a good thing. Let what? me tell you what happened. A tornado hit the trailer park and pulled the cable right out of the side of the double wide, right? Be honest, no, Susie. No, Adam, I swear. All right. Swear. Uh, all right. What else That's up, Susie? Exactly what happened. All right. What's up? So, anyway, Adam, I'd just like to know, I'm very curious, how did you propose? You blew me off in the lightning round last oh, night. Oh, this is you? <laughs> but listen, here, here's what happened. All right. I got engaged, and then I broke up for a year. And then my girlfriend, once we got back together, she was like, she kept bothering me to get married, you know? <laughs> so, we were... Very romantic. Uh, she, we must, she's must be, I hope she's listening. <laughs> well, listen, here, quite frankly, here's my thing. I'm getting married. Isn't that enough? <laughs> I mean, that's the way I look at it. Do you know what I'm saying? <laughs> He's it's like, not kidding at all. It's like when you're a kid, it's like you, your dad is driving you to Disneyland. Does he have to put on the chauffeur's cap or can he <laughs> just have his dignity? <laughs> yeah, that's all I'm saying. Just give me my dignity. That's all. <laughs> so she finally... <laughs> so it wasn't really a proposal. It was a, a, no, a, it was a capitulation. It was a capitulation, capitulation yeah. Maybe. She, she, she kept bothering me about, you know, when... So I said, look, we'll get married. Stop bothering me. And then she said, well, you haven't engaged... We haven't... You haven't... You know, we're not engaged. And you, I said, you haven't asked have, me. We don't have to be. We just set a marriage date, and it's, it's taken care of. You know, I, I did the math. And she said... Anyway, she kept bothering me. So finally... She was wearing the, her engagement ring, but it was on her, her other hand. What again? You, you uh, actually right got hand. her a ring, but what, did she go buy it herself? No, it was her old ring. Oh, my God. From it the was, last yeah, one. Yeah, from the I last one. It. She moved it to the other hand. Okay. And so I pulled it off the other hand and put it on the other hand while we were watching uh, The uh, Tough Man on uh, <laughs> FX. <laughs> Very romantic. <laughs> Wasn't it BattleBots? <laughs> no, it was. I'm, I know where it was. It was Friday night. I think I was watching a tough man competition. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I got down on one knee, but I beat the count and I was back up. Oh my no! I, I was just saying. I, I don't go for all that. I'm trying to set a tone. Here's how Adam, Adam uh, from Post. <laughs> all right. <laughs> Jesus Christ, I hope you choke on this goddamn wedding. <laughs> so we need to think of a new word that describes what it was he did. It was it was like a marriage argument or marriage. What I did was or... no, I, I yeah, it's it's called not not getting married. Yeah, that's it's right. I've done. It, it's it's not being single. <laughs> that's right. Yeah. I've not not gotten married. Yeah, right. All right, we're going to break. Thanks. Get yeah, rid yeah. of that, Susie. And by the way, should you be calling yourself Susie after the age of forty? It shouldn't at least be Sue or Suzanne at this point. I'm going to pass a law along with my Dirk Derek thing. <laughs> All right. Drew? I'm ready. All we're, right. We're going we'll, to uh, take a quick break. Jimmy Kimmel, our guest tonight. Crank Yankers, 1030, Sunday night, Comedy Central after the man show. And we'll be right back. Hey, everybody. It's Loveline. I'm Adam Carolla. That's Jimmy Kimmel, our guest tonight. Dr. Drew is back in L.A. Uh -huh. Frank Yankers is the name of the new show that Jimmy and I are doing. It is on Comedy Central. It's 1030 Sunday night. Tell me it's something. a good one. Is, yeah. da is Daniel still sitting there looking at you guys? Nah, he was tired. It, he, we're in New York right now. and um, He got bored. We did Howard Stern this morning at, uh, what, 5, five o'clock? <laughs> we have to leave the hotel. <laughs> yeah, it's all right. It's 230 and tomorrow we uh, get up at uh, 7.30 to do uh, Good Morning New York or Fox. Fox and Friends. Fox and Friends. Oh, those, I like them. That's, they're fun. Drew, yeah? did we do that Fox and Friends? I, I, not, I've done it a couple times not with you, I think. What it's is Fox? It's, Who it's, are It's the Fox News Network, right? It's the one uh, over there on Maverick of the Americas? We don't know. Uh, yeah. But they don't have any friends, clearly. Huh. It should just be called Fox. Yeah. And uh, then a whole bunch of crap. So uh, we're in a great mood. <laughs> Phone number, 1-800-L-O-V-E-191. Hang on a second. You just did Stern one time? Yeah, we just yeah, did they got Stern a boxing this morning. Match tomorrow, so we're not on tomorrow. Right. And then you're going to do it the next day or, or what, Monday? or No? No. Yeah. Why aren't we doing it Monday? I'm doing Letterman on Monday, and we're both doing The Daily Show on Monday. Ah, okay. Yeah, we're busy. Yeah, we're big, we're big stars. Yeah, I understand All that. Right. Yeah, and with that comes some responsibility. We're, we'll accept that. <laughs> All right. All right, Drew. Here we go. Who's up? This is Josh, 30. 
John, yeah, it's me, Josh. Yeah, good. Hey, I just wanted to say first off that it's a really, it's a real privilege and honor to be able to talk to both um, Adam and Jimmy at the same time. Really, thanks. thanks. Only you could yeah. smell me. Huh? Yeah. Tonight. And one thing, Jimmy, really quick, after the shaving and everything is over with, you know, yes. your your prep work and all that. Yeah. Don't forget a fresh man pond. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. 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 man pond is pond nice. Is very important. That was a uh, co- commercial parody that we did on the Man Show, which was a. Uh, Hey, it's just a big, big. <laughs> so they always sound so bad when you describe them, but it basically was just a tampon for the ass. <laughs> nice. Yeah, I, li- I like the masculine personally. <laughs> masculine, that's good. Too. Yeah, that's a uh, that was a uh, a detergent that's specially formulated to remove protein stains. <laughs> Ma- male protein stains. <laughs> yeah, yeah, of course. Uh, All right, Josh, what's up, buddy? Um, I'm having a problem with um, being able to. Um, get away from my girlfriend. She sleeps with um, other guys on occasion, and it makes me jealous as anything, and I can't seem to get away from her because I'm thinking about, in the back of my mind, the guys she's with, and she's getting banged while I'm not around, and it drives me crazy, and yet I can't for some reason get away from her because I enjoy the sex when and if I'm getting it, and I don't know how to walk away from it. Is she your first girlfriend? She's my first long-term serious relationship. Yeah. Are you afraid you're not going to get sex anywhere else if you let this one go? Um, I guess so. Is there something I, I wrong I with you? Is that way, to be completely honest. Is there something wrong with you or something about you we should know? There's or? nothing wrong with me. Um, I've just, you know, maybe it's just the self-esteem thing. I'm sure it is. But well, why, why is this your only girlfriend at, at age 30? Oh, I've been with her for seven years. All right. No. That's true. Yeah. And All right, she's, she's trouble, though. She's and the whole time she's been sleeping with other guys? I've been finding out this, actually, um, from, oh. from her father. Oh. Which, you know... Um, God. She, she lives in a trailer, and I live in an apartment. <laughs> and <laughs> it's funny, I know, but... <laughs> Um, he tells me that occasionally, you know, guys are over there for the weekend and stuff like that. And then when I ask her about it, you know, of course it's not true, you know, according to her. But maybe she's what sort that? of telling you something. Maybe she really needs to get out of this and doesn't know how to do it either. And so she kind of acts out as opposed to being more honest about her desire to end this relationship. Well, wait a minute. How old is she? She's, a she's month 12. Younger than I am. 30. Okay, just say 30 wise. <laughs> right. Okay, so I hate doing the math for everybody. She's 30, and she's still living in a trailer with her dad? No, she doesn't live with her dad, but they live in the same court. Oh. It's a Springer thing, you know oh. what I mean? Yeah. Oh, really? So she, she, the dad sees guys coming in, in and out right. of her trailer. Exactly. Exactly. What's her dad, dad do, just out of curiosity? He's an electrician. Okay. Well, what do you think? It was a CEO of a yeah, uh, Fortune 500 CEO corporation just chose to live in a trailer? <laughs> <laughs> True. Use your head. All right. Oh. Look, break up with her. Yeah, I'm afraid You so. have to do this. What do, this I is do, your f- what do I do to get my mind off of it, to, to get over the jealousy? To get another angry. girl. Well, You've got to hang yourself and beat off. But he, 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 he won't get another <laughs> no. girl, Jimmy. That's All the problem. Right. He's, he's going to go out there with that desperation you know what? on him. You know what you got to do? Right. Oh, this is a good plan. Be serious Ask with me. I, mean, I'm, I am going to be very okay. serious with you. Right. Ask three girls a day out. Make it your commitment. Make it, just say to yourself, I'm going to ask, every day I'm going to ask three girls to go out with me. Okay. It's going to work out eventually. And that's what, thing, that's it's what, keeping me occupied on doing something more positive, right? Well, listen, you you know, when you get another girl, you're going to forget all about this one. Yeah, Absolutely. No question about it. Right. But you know, you know what else? Josh and and uh, all our male listeners is everyone gets fixated on how am I going to get by without out this chick or how am I going to win this chick back? If you want to get fresh tang, as uh, Drew calls it, orange grape, <laughs> you got to just work on yourself. You're living in an apartment, live in a house. You got a job that pays thirty grand a year, get it up to forty five grand a year. Start doing push ups. But Start more reading. important, really, than any of that stuff is to ask. Yeah, yeah. Put what yourself Jimmy out said. there. Yeah. yeah. What Jimmy said. But but you really, you burn too many calories trying to convince chicks you're someone you're not. And you chicks will be attracted to you if you got a good gig and you don't need them. Sean, 34. Hey, guys. Good radio tonight. Thanks, yeah. Adam and Jimmy, I need your guys' help. Uh, Drew, no offense, but you're too passionate. We're trying to narrow down our <laughs> names for our babies. And my wife came up with these, and I know you guys will give me some good pointers. Yes. Uh, Bryson, Hunter, Jacob, Aiden, Skyler, and Joshua. 
You got to help me. Well, let's go through them one by yeah. one if we could. Go through. What was the first one? Bryson. Okay, the re- Peebo Bryson. Man, that yeah. one's no out. good. Bryce, a short Bryce is not too not bad, bad, but Bryson be... sounds like a hooven animal. Yeah. What's the next one? The other thing, though, it, it's a strange phenomenon that happens to parents is that they think they're 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 discovering the most creative, never thought of before names. When in fact, everyone their age is coming up with the exact same damn names, except for the blacks. Except for the blacks. <laughs> The, the blacks do a, a, a word jumble where they actually take a handful of vowels and consonants and they put it in one of those lotto things. That sp- they, they actually write the letters on ping pong balls and however they come out. I thought out. it was like, the, it was on Soul Train and Don Cornelius puts up the word scramble. That's what it is. No, they do it. Uh, let me tell you, I'm serious. I've studied the blacks. Drew, do you notice they take, they take the ping pong balls. They just put the, all the letters of the alphabet in the first 19 that come out. That's the name of the girl. And whatever order. So let's go through the other names. I met a black guy named Lamangelo. (laughs) (laughs) True story. Lamangelo. Lamangelo. All right, so that's good. So so Bryson, no good. Possible question mark by Bryce, Um, possibly. Hunter. Hunter, no. You know what? Because it's going to be very ironic when he's gay. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> exactly. It's going to be real funny. Asking, That's okay. what I'm saying. Hunter's no good because there's going to be the... You're going on another three. penis hunt tonight? <laughs> <laughs> uh, What's the next... Joshua? Yeah, yeah did, Josh is all right, but that, that's almost like a cop out. As a Josh is like way that. overused. Yeah, a lot yeah, of Josh is overused. Yeah, we couldn't think of anything we went with Josh. What's the next one? Uh, Skyler. No. That's a chick That's like a girl's name, yeah. Yeah, it's like a soap opera chick's okay. name. Okay. Uh, Aiden. Too much want... AIDS in yeah, it. Yeah, too much AIDS. <laughs> well, that's Sex in the City. The kid, guy in Sex in the City was named Aiden. Yeah. Yeah. Why don't but you name I'm him uh, AIDS, though. Why don't you name him HIV? <laughs> and how about Jacob? <laughs> I like that. Yeah, I, I like go Jacob for a Jake. Too. Yeah. I like, but Jake is a nice way to, yeah, to go short, about it. Yeah, And it's important, too, like... See, is my name's uh, Adam, and I got screwed because my parents couldn't lengthen it when they were pissed. You know, like you can call Jacob Jake. You know, when he's a good little boy, come here, Jake. Yeah, good boy. Way to swing the bat. But then when you're mad, you come home and Jacob. <laughs> <laughs> you know, the Jimmy, I guess your parents could call you James yeah, if they got angry. A little, yeah. Yeah, it's good. They use my middle name, yeah, James Christian. Oh, oh, they'd add the middle name when they yeah. got mad. Yeah, uh-huh. definitely. Well, let me ask you. Guys yeah. have a son named Tristan. Is that uh, what do you think of that? Mm, I wish you'd mm. called her. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that is pretty fat, yeah. Means yeah. warrior. Means warrior. I like Tristan. I yeah. Do. Yeah. It rhymes with fiston. Oh, yeah. come on. <laughs> well, that's why, you know, I, I need you guys to give me some good advice. All right, so you're down to Tristan and Jacob. You guys make the choice. Yeah. Uh, well, J- well, there's already a, J- a Tristan. is yeah. his other son. Oh, I see. Um, yeah, yeah, Jacob. Jacob, definitely. Jake. Oh, Jacob. Yeah. Okay, guys. Hey, uh, right. Nice job on Stern today. Thanks. thanks. All right, All guys. Right. Thanks. Good luck with that kid. Yeah. Tristan means warrior. Please. And here's the thing: names they have to sound right. <laughs> that, that here's what it here's what it really means. Except for no one knows what it really means. Yeah. Doesn't work when he's getting his ass kicked. By the way, you know what my last name means? Kimmel. Yeah. He who farts <laughs> constantly. In, in, in what language? It, it's German. My last name, Kimmel. Kimmel. Do you uh, know what? It means caraway seed. <laughs> That's proud. <laughs> yes, yeah, it's a proud and fearsome history. My lineage is one of uh, great pride. Uh, guys who uh, uh, collected worthless uh, seeds <laughs> for uh, bread. Stuck them onto Kaiser yeah, rolls. Glued them onto Kaiser <laughs> It really means caraway seed? Yep. Yeah. The, the Kimmelers. The Kimmelers. Ever hear of Kimmel bread? Oh, Jesus. That is yeah. pathetic. Yep. I kicked my dad right in the nuts for that one. Yeah, it wasn't his fault. Well, I still blame him. <laughs> <laughs> All right, who's next, Drew? This is uh, Christy, who is 28. Christy. Yes, I have a question for you guys. Um, mm-hmm. I think before I ask the question, though, I should probably clear up some background information. Um, I'm actually, I'm 20. Sorry. And whenever I was between the ages of around four and five, I was raped. Um, I remember around two or three times. I don't know if there was any more. Mm-hmm. Um, I am married, and my husband works weird hours, so whenever we go to have intercourse, it's usually like around 2 to 5 a.m. Um, whenever we are going to do that, it seems like I just get nauseous. And it's nothing against my husband. I love him dearly, but I just physically get sick. Is he the only guy you've ever had sex with? Yes. And has Ooh. it always been this way with him? No. 
So, no, it's just I have been kind of ill in the last two years. With what? I'm still trying to find out. I've had what we think is some kind of ovarian problem, but honestly, right now I'm doing a lot of testing trying to find out what it is. Well, pelvic pain is... is <laughs> Oh, was that Jimmy, again? speaking of illness, <laughs> oh, I'm getting lung just cancer. Hearing this. But uh, Christy, the pelvic cro- unexplained chronic pelvic pain is one of the symptoms of having been sexually abused. Okay. Okay. So this may all be sexual abuse, oh, right? Oh, oh. Hold on. Hold wow. On. Wow. 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 I'm not going to be able to get in a cab. <laughs> You know how much cab drivers stink, Drew. Yeah. Even even this will be too much for them. <laughs> wow. That's horrible. It's horrible. Christy, yeah. whatever kind of pain you're in, it pales in comparison to my pain. Because the pain of rape is something you get over in about 60 years. But this, this lingers. Let this me just say on. something seriously to Christy. And, and Drew, you let me know what you think about this. But I've seen some very powerful results from hypnotism. <laughs> I have. <laughs> And I think that, you know, my mother used to get migraine headaches all the time for years, for 20 years, all the time. She took all kinds of stuff, and they gave her all kinds of pills and this and that and that. And we, we took her to a hypnotist, and the guy uh, hypnotized her and gave her a tape to listen to every night before she went to bed. And she rarely has them anymore. But that, that's and a different you, thing. She, that, that's stress reduction. I mean, that's the tape. But couldn't you, though, be hypnotized to think positively about sex and not to, not to be sick about it? You re- it if, if it were that simple, that's what we'd do with everybody like this but could does it could it hurt it, to try it couldn't that? hurt uh typically though it sometimes you can have adverse effects from hypnosis sometimes but usually what it does is reduce symptoms for a couple of weeks and they come back anyway but the thing is i don't have my i don't have like fear of sex i don't have problem with intercourse any other time it just seems like around those hours well, why don't you i, I understand that's because that's when you used to be raped so why don't you not do it during those hours well now from what i remember the hours that i was raped were like between 8 a.m and probably around 4 p.m okay, well, well, typical that, rape hours yeah, are yeah, hold on, is that mountain or standard <laughs> well be that as it may i set my watch for, here. for whatever reason that, jimmy you got one coming about four <laughs> those hours are no good to you why don't you f- do it during different hours Right. Well, I know, and it, it makes and sense. Do, I mean, yes, of course, it does make sense, and we do it di- during different hours. But okay. it seems like if we just have to be messing around, and if we're going to do it during that time, I just become nauseous. Well, who who did this to you, by the way? My cousin. Mm. Your cousin, yeah. and then this went on for a number of years, a couple of years. Um, okay. I remember it. I remember around two or three times it happening. It went on around a year. But how much I, older than you is your cousin? How much older? Um, I think around five years. All right. What state do you live in? Oklahoma. Because it's illegal. There. That's no. what I was at. At no. Eastern Standard Time? Central. So, yeah, that's it. it. Yeah. I'd move to, like, Hawaii or something. It'd be, like, five hours difference. And, uh, and right. You'd yeah. beat it on a technicality. Yeah, really. I want to go to Hawaii. Yay! 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 I want to go to Hawaii. Yay! Hey, all right. So, listen, Christy, you got to get some therapy anyway. You slice it because of what your cousin did to you. She doesn't sound that bad off for no, someone that's been through yeah. what she's been through. Basically fine. And there's going to be some residual effects of this kind of trauma. And, and, and realize probably that pelvic pain is another one of these physiologic responses to having been traumatized. Right. That there are imprints left on your central nervous system from these experiences. And pain and anxiety and all kinds of funny things can be a result. Well, I am going actually to. I mean, I've had gone. I've gone to the gynecologist several times, but I, it's just these real bad pains have happened. About Christy, um, they're this, probably from. They're probably residual. Put her on hold. Abuse, okay? you, I don't Pelvic pain is a, is a common phenomenon related to previous childhood sexual abuse. All right. Do I need to tell the gynecologist about? Absolutely. This? Okay. Thank all right? you. So, so much. he doesn't keep going to more and more aggressive kinds of evaluations. Okay. Thank you all so right. much. All right, Christy. Take care. You too. Drew. Yep. Yeah. We gotta take a break. I'll tell you what. I'm gonna throw myself in a volcano. <laughs> okay. Well, try to see if the farts stop. I'm sort of as a human sacrifice. Please, dear yeah. God. I, I'm basically gonna take the coward's way out. You, to, you're gonna sacrifice to the volcano gods of Jimmy's uh, yeah. ass. Don't worry. I'll finish up here. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Do your work, Jimmy. Will you? Yeah. Finish, finish him off, will you? So it's cool. Uh, you're linger, you, linger, linger like this. Finish him off. <laughs> it's very interesting. I went out to the hall and the uh, picture of Gold in My Ear from 1973. Crying. She's now, she's, now, she's now holding a handkerchief in front of her face. <laughs> <laughs> That's true. Have you seen that? You didn't notice I that? I remember that picture. Notice. It did not have a handkerchief before. Didn't have the handkerchief, no. did it? No. <laughs> All right. We'll uh, take a little break. Crank Yanker Sunday night.
Comedy Central, 1030. Jimmy Kimmel, Adam Carolla, Dr. Drew, and we'll be right back. Hey, everybody. Love Line. I'm Adam. That's Dr. Drew. Jimmy Kimmel's our guest tonight. He's here plugging Crank Yankers, which is our new show, which is on Comedy Central after the man show, 1030. Coming up this Sunday and then uh, the next nine Sundays after that and then probably some reruns. So check that out. All right. Let's take a few more calls here, Drew. Lynn is 23. Hi. Hey, Lynn. Hey, Lynn. Um, I have a strange question. All right. Um, I've been taking birth control for about three and a half years, ever since I had my son. And recently I was put on a different medication that makes you kind of get the runs a lot. What medication? Uh, Atenolol. Okay. And what's going on is I missed a period, and some people told me that if you get the runs a lot, you kind of are shooting the birth control right through your system. So I was wondering if no. it's possible. No. Yes, this is what happened to me, Drew. That's how Drew. That's how Jimmy got pregnant with um, Katie, his first child. Interesting. No, uh, Lynn. I, although, although, just about anything can uh, can influence the effectiveness of the pill. This idea of it somehow changing the transit time through your system. No, 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 no. Okay. Listen, but it's still no good if she's got the runs all the time. Yeah. Why are you taking the Atenolol? Um, I was diagnosed with SVT. Yeah, but there's a lot of other things you can take. And plus, they can teach you how to deal with it when you get it. They teach you how to bear down and splash water in your face and all that stuff. Wait a minute. SVT? It's, it's, it's called supraventricular tachycardia. It's actually PSVT, paroxysmal supraventricular tachycardia. And it's a normal thing, Lynn. Hold on a second. And you Are should... you a real doctor or just a love doctor? <laughs> Okay, those, those go ahead. Those excite you, huh? Just go. Um, and you know, they, what's it do? It just gives you a fast heart rate in, in paroxysms and what, what was happening is I was passing out at work and things, and I was actually not able to even lift anything anymore. I have the Wolf Parkinson White. Uh, that's different. Wolf Parkinson yeah. White is a different thing. Sorry. Yeah. So that's why you're on the Atenolol. All right. So then you have let to take it. Let me tell you this: if you passed out at our work at the Man Show, <laughs> you'd wake up with uh, with a mustache <laughs> drawn on your upper lip, a penis drawn on your back, a butt plug in you, a wolf tattoo. There'd be there'd be there would be videotape of you performing what <laughs> looks like fellatio on a corpse. <laughs> It'd be a disaster. Can you imagine passing out at our work? We should hire her. No, but w- Wolf Parkinson White can be a kind of dangerous thing. In fact, if you get atrial fibrillation on top of Wolf Parkinson White, it can be really a mess. Yeah, so, well, my concern was the fact that I was told not to get pregnant. Yeah. So I and, have that straightened out. And so that's yeah. Right. Are they going to do some ablation therapy on, on you? Um, they haven't really decided what to do yet okay. uh, because they say I'm pretty young. Yeah. No, you're going to be fine. You'll you're be, be fine, fine, sweetie. Oh, I know. You it. need to take the Atenolol because the stuff that we usually use for true SVT would make Wolf Parkinson White worse. Yeah. True. What? They, Drew. They, they said Put her on hold. Of, might make it better, so I don't know. Well, they can also make it worse. So yeah. it's it, a is what you want to use for WPW. So okay. my prescription: get those um, those handy wipes that you use on your ass for the toilet. Oh yeah, yeah. <laughs> we heard about that, Jimmy. Not the ones from Clorox. The ones, Mr. Yeah. Clean. Yeah, not the Mr. Clean ones. Yeah, <laughs> the, if they're pine scented, uh, it's probably a good clue about uh, not wiping it on your ass. Jimmy, everyone, Jimmy wiped his ass with those uh, counter wipes for uh, many a day before they, his they, ass finally no, caught yeah, They look like it diaper was... wipes, right? They're in a diaper well, wipe. Well, listen, my wife, my wife introduced both the diaper wipes and this new Clorox or whatever it was product. The, the same week. So upstairs in the bathroom, we had the regular uh, friendly powder-scented ass wipes, which I started using and which worked quite nicely. And then downstairs were the toxic, um, burning, um, disinfectant uh, toilet wipes, which I was also using on my uh, the, the, the tile very, cleaners. I don't know if you've ever poked around in there, but it's very tender and it's very sensitive. Mm. And it's not to be fooled with. And its chemicals are not to go in that area. And Jimmy, here's Adam, the told deal. Me, Adam told me he has to use those wipes because he said otherwise it's like taking peanut butter out of shag carpet. Oh, true, please. Yeah. Yeah. Here's, right. here's really what happened with, with uh, Jimmy's ass. We, he awoke a sleeping giant with those wipes. <laughs> he angered the giant. <laughs> and now the, a troll, the giant fair, troll. Is, is seeking its vengeance upon my nose. <laughs> <laughs> it's basically what has gone on. Amber. That I'm being punished for, for, for the crimes of Jimmy's hand. Amber? Yes, go ahead, Amber. Hello? Hi. Hi. Um, I'm Amber. And hey, Amber. Hi. Um, I was. I know I have a weird question, um, but um, my friends want to have a foursome. Mm-hmm. And it's me, 
Golf? Hi. <laughs> Bowling. <laughs> I hope it's golf you're talking about. No, it's... it's... Hold on, okay? Oh. Yeah, all right. Yeah, yeah. No problem. Jimmy, let's talk more about your ass. Yeah. <laughs> No, it's... We've only dedicated about 40 minutes. My ass is once to have a foursome with um, Hitler, the <laughs> devil, and the Green River Killer. <laughs> That's right. All right. Oh well, who wants to have this foursome, Amber? Uh, me, my friend, Janae. And oh. I don't know if I should ask my boyfriend, but I met this uh, this guy. His name's Atenel. At and yes, I don't know it's important that we know their names. Yeah, yeah, that's why we don't believe it. Do you only hang out with terrorists? No. You got your name in a tunnel? <laughs> Jesus Christ. What happened to this country? What Full happened of to... shoe bombers. <laughs> They're all shoe bombers now, Drew. Full of them. All right. Hey, Drew. I've had an ass full of karma. Let's go. Yeah. You close up shop for us. <laughs> I will do you? that. We're <laughs> tired. No, We're right. the hotel. Yes, all right. <laughs> 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 no, cannot right, have. Buddy. Cannot have. No, no cannot. No. Uh, could I have some extra tahini on that falafel? No. Uh, how about you take twenty dollars? Because I don't have. No. Um, I like to substitute the baklava with the uh, baba ganoush. No. <laughs> That's my impression of everyone who runs a Middle Eastern place. All, All right, right, guys. Thank you, Jimmy. <laughs> Being kicked off. Crank Yankers is the show. No. That's right. Yes, That's right. Uh, Sunday night at 10.30, Comedy Central after the man show. That's God right. bless you all. all and right. uh, I'll be uh, talking to you all uh, Sunday night from uh, back here in New York. Excellent. All right, and Drew, is yeah. anyone, do we have a guest Sunday night? Kennedy, Sunday night. Oh, good times. Yeah. Uh, that'll be comfortable. Yeah. I owe her like 45 calls. Oh. <laughs> that'll be great. <laughs> I'm going to blame that on you. You go with of it. Okay? I'll go with it. <laughs> all right. We'll be back. Bye. That'll do it for Loveline. I'm Dr. Drew. Adam and Jimmy have gone off into the sunset. I imagine Clem climbed into a cab together. God only knows. I hope Adam survives this. Uh, but I somehow feel somehow feel very, very gratified by that, listening to that whole experience. I mean, I've suffered through a lot with him and, and his ass. And, you know, it's nice to get some retribution. It really is. <sighs> well, show's over. Uh, Kennedy is our next guest. Next week we have also Tim Stack from Son of a Beach. And in the meantime, until the next show, we hope to see you then. Uh, this is Dr. Drew on behalf of Adam Carolla saying mahalo. I want to go to Hawaii. Yay! Yay! I want to go to Hawaii. This has been Loveline. The opinions expressed on this show are not necessarily those of the staff, management, sponsors, or this station. The producer for Loveline is Ann Wilkins Engel. Loveline is a presentation of Westwood One Entertainment.